really good. Welcome back to the Running Report Show, where we give you running news produced for and by the culture every single month. And I know for the past two months we were gone, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. That was on me, your host, Joshua Potts. But we got a great episode with great analysts to come on and analyze all the things that went down in the month of December. I know the month of December isn't over yet, but there has been a lot of crazy running in these past three weeks, and we got to recap it all here on the Running Report. First, we just had this great marathon project where we saw amazing racing and amazing stories all around also jenna hutchins is going off jenna hutchins is running amazing these past couple months and we have to talk about her dominance in the high school ranks plus we probably saw the greatest running on american soil in 2020 on the first week of december at the sound running track meet and i'm gonna recap all of that with a youtube sensation that i think you guys are gonna want to hear from so without further do let's get into the running report we got four laps four questions and four topics to go hey let's get on the ride let's get it merry christmas with four laps to go we gotta start with the marathon project that just happened yesterday in the men's race first saw mar hair who ran away with the victory at the very end in a 208 59 making him the number seven american of all time in the marathon and really just a showing out party martin has been finishing in like the top 10 at olympic trials and to come out and to get this win here with people like scott fobble and jared ward as well in this race elite competitors and to get this win at number seven all time under 209 okay martin here i see you we got more over to the women's race where i feel like we saw like the real shine of the event first off sarah hall number six all time to the number two all-time American women marathon list like come on Sarah Hall was going out there trying to break the American record and was on pace going through the half marathon but then she just it just didn't it wasn't her day she wasn't she wasn't able to get that American record but to still go out there and run a performance like this is definitely just telling of how good she has gotten this year in 2020 and performances that she already had but before we get more into Sarah Hall I also want to talk about Kiara D'Amato who finished second in this race who's really just been having an also phenomenal 2020 since October she ran the number 10 all-time half marathon time for American she got the 5k Olympic trial standard she ran the 10 mile american record on the roads and now she's number seven all time on the american on the american marathon list like this is amazing to see and back in 2017 she had she went through her pregnancy as well and then all to finally get back here in 2020 at 36 years old is really amazing for the model and just to see how people are resurging in such a hard year but the question i want to ask from this because we've seen so many people like paul D'Amato and Hare really just go off this year and emerge and resurge and have the best years of their lives here in 2020 and not even considering them people just like Joshua Chef the guy as well and another good example I think would be Jacob Caplimo who are really burst on the scene here and this is me kind of playing devil's advocate but I'm just wondering I want you guys to answer in the comments as well will these COVID racing heroes translate into 2021 now don't crucify me don't crucify me I love Sarah Hall she was on our two black runners podcast if you want to go listen to that episode it's linked down below it's a shameless plug but hey i got you gotta listen to the podcast somehow i gotta get out i gotta advertise it but yeah, bro, I really do like Sarah Hall. I love what she's doing. Jeff Kalimo as well. And all these other people have resurged and risen in 2022 to challenge. But when you think about it, 2020, like this year in sports, there's no pressure, especially in track and field with the Olympics postponed him. So I don't know if that's if this is really going to translate once they get into real competition with the best of the best, with the screaming fans and everything around them. Because we know once you get under the lights, once you get in the track, once once you get the elbows with you and you have people screaming at you, it's definitely a different experience and will people be able to translate that? Now for Sarah Hall specifically, because that's the person I want to talk about, because I think this is the tip of the iceberg for Sarah Hall. There's a lot of people that have doubted her in the past, but I think this is her, this is like, this wasn't the coming out party for Sarah Hall, because she's been here for a minute, but this was a reintroduction. She said, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Hall, H to the A-L-L. That was whack. Should I cut? Oh, that was. <laughs> 
and now we know she's a real marathoner after that london marathon finish it showed that she can compete in international waters now coming back into domestic and destroying the competition just shows that she's a real threat number two all time like Give this girl her respect. Give her, her respect. She's doing her thing. And Sarah Hall, like, she's a real force to be reckoned with. I wish she would be running at the Olympics, but then have the greatest performance at Atlanta. But for the next couple years and years to come, like, she's a real threat and somebody that we're going to look out for. And that American record, it, it, I think it's going down soon enough. It's going down. Three laps to go, we have to talk about the dominance from Jenna Hutchins over these past couple months. First off, she broke the US high school girls cross country 5k record and being becoming the first girl ever to break 16 minutes in that 1558. And then this past weekend, she went out and she ran 1534 in the 5k on the track to break the U20 American record, which was held by Molly Huddle and break the US high school girls record as well, which was which was held by Caitlin Tui and that's pretty good company to be in like overall with Molly Huddle and Caitlin Tui she's definitely on her way and to talk about all of this I had to bring in my guy Daniel Ozan coach O we talked about Foot Locker last year with Sophia Dudex dominance and really just Caitlin Tui as well last year and I, I had to bring him in and I haven't seen him in a like a long time this is my coach so I, I just have to talk to him to be honest like coach how's it going I'm oh, good man how are you Dude, I'm doing good. I'm doing fine. And it's great to just be able to like to talk some track and to have some track and just running news happening all around. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, there's been some amazing things happening, you know, in the pro world and the high school world the past couple couple weeks. So definitely exciting. Yeah, for sure. And let's just dive right into this. And I, we were talking about this a little bit earlier off wax, just to the fact, because I brought, brought the questions to you and you were saying that uh, Jenna Hutchins, like by the stats, <laughs> She, she's one of the greatest. She's definitely put herself as the greatest by the stats, 5K track record, 5K high school cross country record as well. But I think we do have to ask this question because I think a lot of people are thinking this. Just in these past couple two months, has Jenna Hutchins rose to be the top high school girls runner of all time? And I feel like last year we just saw the greatest in Caitlin Tui and she kind of just surprised us all. And she may be the greatest. What do you think about that? Man, I... I it's debatable. Do I do I think so? I mean, I think yes. Uh, mm -hmm. On on paper, I think yeah. You know, she had some great times. She was ninth uh, in Foot Locker in 2018. She was fifth in Foot Locker in 2019, and she's improved a, a tremendous amount and running 15:58 on in the 5K for a for a junior for a 16 year old is, is ridiculous. Crazy. Um, but you know, my argument last year, Caitlin Tui she was undefeated she looked really good and then towards the end of the year she was kind of uh vulnerable mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i it, it's tough to call I, I think jenna on paper could be the greatest of all time and i think that next year her senior year it's game over and then she's just going to stamp it to where she is the greatest of all time do i think she can run you know in track do i think she can run under 9 30 in the in the two mile uh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. you know what i mean to run in as a senior yeah she's definitely going to be stamped there do i think it's stamped yet no is she on her way most definitely um you know you got a lot of runners you know sydney thorvalston Bryn brown mm -hmm. you know you've got people like them that you know that she hasn't raced it's really really different when you when you put up those times but you have the pressure of high school girls you know, it's it's a whole lot different. So to put them all in a race, you know, Tatum, uh, Kate, Riley, all those all those girls, Brooke Robert, like if you put all those girls in a race, then we can say, OK, how dominant can she be? Um, is she dominant? Yes. Uh, can she be dominant with high school girls? I don't think she'll be as dominant as it looks like on paper. 1534, I think, is is impressive. But next year, yeah, you asked me that question. It's hands down. Jenna Hutchins is going to be probably for a very long time she's gonna be there's no caitlin tui there's no yeah dudek there's <laughs> there's jenna hutchins with all the records yeah then you we're also before you're mentioning all the other great year, great girls in this class right now who are really competing with like sydney thorwilson and bren brown and city Massarelli. there's so many girls running really fast right now and also mia barnett shout out to california real quick like all these yep. girls are running really good and to be honest like we've seen a lot of dominance in the girls in the national level for the past couple of years and it seemed like we're gonna seem like it, it was gonna be really competitive this year do you think this could have been like the most competitive we ever seen that 
last time I feel like the girls were this competitive, at least at the top, I would have to go back to what, I don't remember what's your NXN, but when we had Elise Cranny, uh, Alexa Infersen, and Sarah Baxter battling out like the whole 5K at NXN, could this have been like that same thing if we could have had that NXN or Foot Locker happen this year? Hands down, yes. You know, last year we talked about, uh, you know, uh, Foot Locker being the greatest Foot Locker ever, you know, with that many people under yeah. 17. But every year it just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> so I definitely think if, if all those top girls were in the same race, uh, it would have been amazing. Like, really, really awesome. So. Yeah, it's going to be, it's really going to be interesting to say the least, bro. And I can't, I can't wait to be like at Foot Locker next year and like seeing what these <laughs> girls run with you. Like, it's going to, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully next year, I know, I know we will. I know next year we'll be out there at Foot Locker oh, yeah. cheering these girls on. Yeah, sure. Yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for, uh, you know, the, just watching, you know, it's different for us because in Cali, but watching like these fast times all over yeah. and then you're, it should have, could have, would have, and then you're like, well, it's track season. Yeah. Go. Let's see what they can do. So, hey. Yeah, man. But thanks for coming on, Coach Joe. We really do appreciate you every single time you of come course, on the Running Report and get really just to talk appreciate about track. Me. Yeah, man, appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go back to the sound running track meet where we saw the best race in America this year in 2020. Now, honestly, the meet director, Jesse Williams, called this the unofficial 5K and 10K U.S. championships. And that's what we saw. We had 37 U.S. Olympic trials qualifiers, 14 Olympic A standards, and three national records from, to Amer the, from the American runners to the international runners. We saw great running all around. Like, it was definitely the best racing that we've seen on American soil this year. With all that amazing running I can't talk about by myself, so I have to bring in the photographer, YouTube sensation. Y'all, you guys all know him. He's been blowing up 2020. Ben Crawford into the building, onto the Runner Report show, bro. First off, Ben, just how's everything going? How's life? Like, how, how's it going? Life is life is going great, man. You know, uh, 2020's been definitely a, a really weird year, but you know, just thankful that I'm still able to do what I love and, uh, you know, be able to go to school and, and, you know, put on for the sport of track and field, the, the sport that we all love. And it's just, it's great, man. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And then you were actually able, you were at the meet too. We were both at the meet uh, covering yes, it sir. and media and everything like that. And you actually put in a video, you made a video for it to YouTube, really just showing like the love and support that all the runners had for sound running and putting on that event. How did that really all come together before we get into all this uh, sound running recap? I mean, I, I live with uh, a couple of the guys like Cooper Tier and, and Charlie Hunter and some of the other guys that were racing. And they're talking about uh, like, oh, we're going to go do this, this sound running meet. It's going to be in Southern California. And I'm like, man, I'm from Southern California. I want to go down. So I was like, I got to make a video on this, especially I hadn't made a video in uh, two, three months. So I was like, this this would be perfect. Yeah. So uh, I just shot an email to uh, Jesse Williams, the meet director. Great guy. Super thankful that he uh, replied, let me come down and, and film for the uh, for my YouTube channel, you know, just kind of trying to bring the hype up and get uh get people engaged with the track meet and the the sport and yeah most definitely i think you most definitely did that for sure and i think that's really just like uh like applause to jesse because i this dude he's really initiative and i think we're, this is a name that we're gonna hear yeah. for like the next couple of years for sure like i was telling aaron the other day i'm all like my brother aaron that that this jesse williams is low-key the don king of track and field right now the same way that don king was promoting boxing matches for mike tyson like i feel like that's what's gonna be like and he's really doing great he, he knows uh he's definitely like in tune with the the newer generation of the sport too and kind of knows that hey you gotta be able to tap into these social media channels and like that's what's going to grow the sport and get more people interested in it and so hats off to him for uh you know realizing that and, and you know putting up with the, the younger generation of the sport. <laughs> yeah, but let's get into this real quick, this quick little recap. And first off, I have to say off the bat, there was so much going down, like we can't get through all of it in this little segment, but what was your biggest performance or your biggest takeaway? What did you like most about from the performances we saw that that first week of December? I think Luis Grijalva and Cooper Tier kind of stunning me uh, that pro 5K field as the two college kids coming in there and, and giving them the work. That was that was pretty cool to see, especially kind of being the same age as them and having come up with them through high school in California, just seeing that they're just getting they're just getting started. And, you know, it could be the, the future faces of the sport right there. Yeah, I honestly do believe that. And I feel like we're going to see those guys for over this next decade, if that be in the five, maybe oh, yeah. in the 15, maybe in the 10 one day, like for sure. But as you mentioned, 
Cooper Tier. You you went to Oregon or you still go to Oregon. You did your time there and like being around these guys, filming videos with these guys. And like Cooper has always been that centerpiece from Oregon since he got there, being that four flat, running that four flat at Mount Sac, barely almost hitting that under four, and like really been yeah. that star guy. But now it looks like he's really getting to that next level onto the track, getting that Olympic trial standard. And even seeing Cole Hawker almost getting that scalp on Matthew Sensiewicz and everything and Charlie Hunter going out there and performing. Like, what's the difference in the Oregon men this year to where we are talking about before we started this? Like, they're looking like the Oregon men back when Eric Jenkins and uh, Edward Trezorek were going to the school there. Honestly, I think it's just, I mean, coming in in 2017, 2018, you know, they had a coaching change and, you know, that, yeah. that first year afterwards kind of getting adjusted to it and getting their bearings. But now... I feel like they're just kind of really training together and, and coming together as a team and, and working for each other and, you know, being okay with, with hurting and, and putting in the work and just wanting success more than anything and wanting to live up to that, that Oregon name and, and be the, the hot shots and the face of that program. Yeah, and like you said, living up to that Oregon name, Oregon has always been the conversation when it comes to cross country, distance running. But for the past couple of years, bro, it's been NAU. NAU, the Lumberjacks, and they even went out there and they made a statement out there on the men and women's side. But like I said, Oregon was really, really played up as well. But we've seen this across like the entire meet. The, when you look at the winners of all the meet, we have Shelby Houlihan who trains in Oregon, win the 5K. And then we had Luis Grave on the same night who won the 5K, he runs at NAU from Northern Arizona. And then the 10K, we had Eric Jenkins who trains in Oregon, win the 10K. And then we had Rachel Schneider win the 10K who trains in Flagstaff. So there's kind of like these two hot, hot, hot grounds for training in Oregon and Arizona that really become like the highlights of US running. How's it feel to kind of be in that center in Oregon and see like this type of like rivalry or just like competitive energy around these two places? It's awesome, man. I mean, just to, to be able to to kind of have my, uh, or I guess be able to be in the mix a little bit and, you know, kind of see what's going down. I think that it's only going to benefit the sport in the long run, you know, kind of having these these two hotbeds of, of training groups and training grounds, whether it be in Portland, Eugene, Flagstaff. I think having runners in, in Flagstaff and Eugene in these kind of locations, it almost gives a, the identity of a team like you have in these other sports like basketball, football, baseball, where, you know, you look at Bowerman Track Club and it's like, okay, 10 man elite, like the Pete Julian, uh, Portland, Oregon group. But that's like kind of as close as you can get to teams. But with, I guess, training in these different cities with all these different groups, it they have a sense of camaraderie for each other. And it's, it's just really cool to see. And on the surface, it might seem like, why would they create this rivalry, like, et cetera. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's good for the sport. It gets people talking about it. And I think that's something that's overlooked a lot. Uh, within the sport is people trying to be all goody goody and stuff but it's like nah sometimes you gotta push little buttons to to get the people engaged really do appreciate you coming on we definitely gotta get you on next time and if you guys aren't already subscribe to ben crawford like come on follow me on instagram everything everything will be linked down below appreciate you bro word man appreciate you having me come on here man thank you now with one lap to go it's time for our bell lab question which is a question that comes straight from you guys on instagram so you want to make sure you guys follow us at running underscore report to be caught up on everything running report or just follow us down below in the link below and it'll straight take you straight to our instagram but this time the question is going to come from me and i want you guys to comment down below in the comments this your answer to this question now when you go on christmas morning do you go on your run before the presents or after the presents now this is a real dilemma that i deal with every single christmas because i'm all like do i want to run in the morning like take a shower then put my pjs on for i can still have like a effect of like christmas morning as like a five-year-old kid running downstairs or do i just want to like chill and then get my run in later today but i like to run in the morning to get it out the way so i don't know i don't know i want to hear from you guys what do you guys what do you guys do do you run before the presents or after the presents comment down below and if you don't even run like let me just know what you do christmas morning what's the usual christmas routine like i really would like to hear you guys from the comments below but not just in the bell lab question from everything that we talked about and make this a real discussion down below on anything if that's from jenna hutchins if that's from the marathon project or from the sound running track me go ahead 
bring it down to the comments down below and let's discuss this and i'll be down there too talking it up with y'all so yeah thank you guys for watching the december edition of the runner report it's been a great time hanging with you guys in 2020 and i can't wait for 2021 to come back here on the runner report and have some fun bruh I'm glad you guys stayed through this annoying video, and I hope that you guys will be here next year when I get to annoy you some bit more. <laughs> but yeah, see y'all next year on the Runner Report. Deuces. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy New Year. Let's get it.